The Congolese government either could not or would not maintain discipline over its troops here. People here say that soldiers roamed freely through the camp, abusing the population. In the first six months since the camp was established, more than 100 women reported being raped by government troops. The soldiers of the Congolese Army 6th Brigade did not want to be filmed. But one did respond to the rape charges and talked about their mission. And that was a report shot by our producer, George Lerner. For more on the challenges of rebuilding Eastern Congo, we continue with actor Ben Affleck in Los Angeles. From Washington, we welcome Sylvie Mwanga Mbanga, a Congolese human rights lawyer. And here in the studio, we are joined by Jason Stearns, who's worked in Eastern Congo's war zones with the International Crisis Group and the United Nations. Let me first, I just want to continue with you, Ben, because I was asking you when, the, when your earpiece went down, you have talked about using celebrities' currency to do something. Just explain that so that we can take that as a jumping-off point. Uh, first of all, I want to say hi to uh, Jason, who is one of the people who I hounded until finally he gave me a few minutes of his time and taught me and was very generous, so I appreciate that. Um, I learned a great deal from him. He's a tremendous expert and had, had, had a tremendously positive impact uh, on the region. Um, I think as, as a celebrity, you know, you, you have to be um, very judicious because, you, you, you know, you do have a, an opportunity to get on camera. And so it's really important to make sure that you do um, learn a lot and spend a lot of time learning and be humble and learn from folks like, like Jason. And also, um, uh, perhaps even more importantly, you know, uh, uh, the Congolese, if you're going to work in, in Congo. Um, and then, you know, it's, you, know you, you have to, uh, I think in general, one has, a, has an obligation to do something important with one's life. And so choose what that is, dedicate yourself to it, and then, um, you know, follow through. All right. Well, we're going to take these issues right now. And since you mentioned Jason and you're sitting right next to me, let me ask you, and we have this map there. Number one, is this the kind of help you need to raise the profile of what's happening in, uh, in Congo and show us where the the desperate emergency is right now? Well, it's really difficult to, to isolate the worst areas. The area where the worst violence has been over the last several months has been this sort of axis around here. Uh, but really, all across this area that you see here, about the size of California, uh, there is ongoing violence. I think that in response to your question uh, about what, what Ben is doing, I think it's great. Um, I think, however, uh, and I can only applaud what he's doing, I think the key challenge in the Congo is actually to try to reform the state and state institutions. Mm -hmm. And so while what he's doing with local NGOs is wonderful, I think that we're not going to have a solution to the problem, and to the rapes for that matter, until we have a Congolese state and army that serves the people rather than preys on the people. So can you, how do you do that? Well, it's a very good question. It's something the United States is trying to do in Afghanistan. It's not with, you know, hundreds of thousands of troops. Uh, and in the Congo, we have 20,000 peacekeepers who are now supposed to leave because President Kabila has asked them to leave. So uh, it's, it's very difficult, especially if the state is unwilling. But uh, $4 billion is currently the amount that the international community gives to the Congo for various things. And yet, and they've done a great job in emergency stuff, in feeding uh, displaced people, but really a very poor job in reforming the state institutions that would prevent such a crisis in the future. So let me turn to Sylvie in Washington. You are a lawyer. You're dealing with the victims of rape and other such sexual violence. In terms of, I guess, not just on the individual level, but on the big level, can you, can you make a difference here? Is there some way of bringing accountability for these crimes? Yeah, that, like uh, my colleague talk about, talk about uh, the justice and the responsibility of the state, I think the problem is the policy on the national level. Even if uh, the victim have the, they, they are ready to go to talk about the issue, but the problem is that the government should make sure that the justice will be there to do a great job about to get the justice to the victim. 
They think it's the corruption, even if we have a lot of cases. When I used to work with the victim in the east of the Congo, the problem is not... We, are, we have many testimony, but to prove, to have an affidavit, to prove the, the, the justice, that is the, mm-hmm. that this, so, the, was the perpetrators, is very, very difficult. So what you're and saying, uh, Sylvie, is that you need all the, the, the legal uh, weapons at your disposal to be able to go to court and to actually, to actually prosecute these crimes. Let, let me just put up um, a, a, a quote that comes from the International Crisis Group, for instance, about rape. It says, rape is not just a byproduct of the conflict in Congo. It's an, it is a combat strategy systematically used to terrorize and humiliate, and it cannot be tolerated to achieve a larger military goal. That's from Sarah Spencer, who's the director of the IRC's program. And, and in this regard, given what you've both been saying about taking this to a government level, Ben Affleck, let me ask you, because you did talk to the president of Uh, Congo, to Joseph Kabila. You sat with uh, the president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame. You had an opportunity to speak truth to power and use your high profile. What did you, what did you say to them? What did they say to you? Uh, I I mostly um, take the opportunity that I get when I'm talking to anybody in a position of power and influence or expertise um, to to learn uh, at this point, you know. And one of the things that I learned from those gentlemen is that, uh, which is interesting, is that they really have a genuine commitment to uh, a stable uh, eastern Congo. There's a point now, which I don't think there used to be, where they now both feel like they have a pretty, at least according to them, uh, um, at least in terms of what they said to me, um, uh, an investment in no, they, they would like Eastern Congo to be stable and, and uh, mm-hmm. secure for their own political agendas. And in terms of the rape as a weapon of war, you know, <clears throat> I think that's true. And I, I think that that's happening. And I also think what's happening is something in tandem with that, which is that while rape gets used as a weapon of war, it also creates a culture where it sort of becomes permissive. And so you also have that happening around, rape happening around that where it becomes sort of, uh, kind of the thing to do, frankly, um, and becomes allowed, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, and so you have this, both. The, this, this constant culture of impunity. Jason, stability, is there any hope that at any time soon there's going to be stability, or, is, or are the, the factors that are creating this war still hot and boiling? Well, we've come an awful long way from the peak of the war in, I would say, 2000 or 2001, where you had nine African countries involved, Uh, where the whole country was really engulfed in war. Now you have a small area of the country that's engulfed in terrible violence, but it's much better than it used to be. So we've come a long way, but I would say that the the key factors that initially brought the war about in 1996, uh, the collapse of the Congolese states and the overflow of the genocide in Rwanda, those factors are still prevalent today. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have not yet done enough to really root out those causes and to prevent for further conflict in the future. Let me play this, uh, this uh, bit of a, an announcement by Secretary of State Hillary Clinton when she was in Goma a few months ago, Goma, which is in the Congo. Listen. And today I'm announcing that we will provide more than $17 million in new funding to prevent and respond to gender and sexual violence in the DRC. So, Sylvie, Secretary of State Clinton, on behalf of the United States government, is talking about $17 million uh, to prevent gender-based violence. Is that going to help? Will that make a difference? And how? Yeah, I think it's a good initiative, but the problem is how they're going to use this money. That I say, the the government should make sure that it's addressing the need of the population, Congolese population. And the first, like uh, others said, is uh, the justice. We need to punish the perpetrators of the uh, the sexual violence against women. And the other side, the policy which the government is supposed to do should make to address, to make the sexual violence against women like the priority of the government. But in the way we are, we are, we are, we are seeing is not like it's not the priority of the government. And we need to address this one. And the other thing, the other side is uh, we need to 
uh, the big fact in it, uh, the, the, of the sexual violence in the Congo and locally is the poverty of the youth. We see how the youth are using by the Congolese army mm -hmm. to, to rape women. If they have kind of activity, maybe they can, okay. they can change their behavior. Right. Yeah. This is a war crime. Rape, Jason, as a tool of war, is a war crime. It's not just a crime, it's a war crime, and it's been enshrined as that at the war crime, war crime tribunals. Is there, do you know of any progress or developments on any of the investigations into the war crimes, any of the UN investigations? Are there going to be any announcements? Well, let me, if I may, Christiane, come back to what you were talking about Hillary Clinton. I think this is very important. She said $17 million, primarily given money to hospitals. This is great. We are giving $4 billion to the Congo. Uh, President, to who in the Congo? We're giving $4 billion to the World Bank, to the IMF, to the UN peacekeeping mission. But to, to the government? To the, in part to the government. It, this is everything together, humanitarian aid. But a large chunk of that goes to the government. Despite the fact that we're giving $4 billion to this wide array of different causes, but much of it to the government, we have failed in reforming state institutions. $17 million, 17, for me, this is propaganda. That's not, I mean, there's nothing else in terms of the U.S. government. I'm a, I was a big supporter of President Obama. He mentioned numerous points in his campaign that he would address Darfur and the Congo, but you cannot, I mean, it's almost $17 million. This is, this is nothing. Ben, you know, you, yeah. you have this role now. You've taken it on. Uh, you have mm -hmm. access to the halls of power and to, and to people like President Obama, presumably. Is this a message that you want to convey? Do you feel this is your work now to, 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 to make this visible and unavoidable? Well, I, I wouldn't overstate my access to President Obama, but I would, uh, I would definitely, I, I tend to agree with Jason in some respects. I think the, um, uh, 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 I, I think the important thing, what happens is that we have a very sort of scattershot approach here. You've got, you know, USAID over here, defense over here. You have all this very scattershot approach to our policy with DRC. And so what happens is that when we spend money, it's very ineffective. Um, and so, you know, adding more money in, in various ways uh, sometimes, you know, doesn't work. What we need to do is have this comprehensive policy where we sort of understand what we're doing collectively. That means diplomatically, that means how we spend our money, and that means taking a very strong leadership role in the United States. Uh, okay. We're not necessarily all the way popular, but if we do that, I think it can make a real and profound difference. And we won't need to spend more money necessarily, but what, uh, I think we can make a real difference in how we affect okay. uh, what's going on there in DRC. That's the challenge, and I thank you all for joining me. Ben Affleck, Sylvie, and Jason, thank you so much for being here in the studio.